Welcome back to the Heartbeats Podcast. I'm your host, Ruth Kogan, and I want to thank you for joining me on the podcast all about L-O-V-E, love. That's right, but most specifically, the love God has for us as demonstrated in how he brings two people together for marriage and how he is loving upon those singles. And so I'm excited for you all to meet in season two, episode two, my cousins, Krissa and Joshua North, very dear and near to my heart. And uh, Krissa is a Kogan, shout out to the Kogans. Her father is my dad's younger brother, and they have a beautiful story, which we're going to get right into. But just in case this is your first time joining us. I just want to remind you, as I do every week, that as you're listening to their story, pay attention to what details, what aspects are popping out to you. Because around here, we call that our heartbeat, which is something God is communicating to us as we listen to uh, a conversation or story. Because God is so good, he wants to encourage us. He wants to challenge us in the circumstances we find ourselves in. He wants to grow our faith and deepen our hope and our trust in him. His desire is that we would see more and more of our life through his lens. And he does that in such a beautiful and powerful way through stories. So at the end, you will listen or hear my heartbeat. As I share what I sense God was speaking to me as I heard their story. So without further ado, let's meet the Norths. Carissa and Josh, welcome to the Heartbeats Podcast. Thanks for having us. (laughs) All right. So as y'all know from the intro, y'all are meeting my cousins on the Kogan side. So shout out to the Kogans. And um, Chris is my cousin through blood. Josh, you're my cousin via marriage. But I consider you more like a brother. Like, you're my bro. My bro. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of Chris the Mary and Josh. So um, <laughs> with that said, introduce y'all. So what should we know about Chris and Josh North? Yeah, so we are the Norths, or as we call our our team name with, with our girls, we are the North Stars. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> we live in Northern California. We lived here for about seven years. Mm-hmm. And no, yes. we have two girls, Kingsley and Justice. They're five and four, and they're a lot of fun. And then I'm pregnant yeah. with our third, um, who's a boy, and his name Yay! is Amy. Yes. Yeah. we're all excited to meet him the beginning of december mm-hmm. um yeah we've been married eight and a half years eight and a half really coming up Seven. on ten no coming eight and a half. Eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we're 
I was going to skip over nine, but <laughs> <laughs> rounding up to the nearest well hole. Well. <laughs> <laughs> We've known each other for nine years. Yeah. Nine years. Mm. Yeah. We'll get to that piece. Okay. So, um, eight and a half going on 10. <laughs> I always felt, I always felt like growing up too, I was kind of that, that kid that just like couldn't wait to be old, you know? So it was sort of that, like, <laughs> you know, she's five going on 15 or <laughs> whatever, but <laughs> so I can relate Josh, but you'll get there eventually. Oh. I round up. Chris, it doesn't like it, but I round up. <laughs> Ah, you learn new things every day. Um, okay, so where were you all at before? We're just gonna j- dive right in because I don't, you know, because y'all are fam, we could talk all day long about randomness. But let's get right to your story. So I want to hear where were you all at before you all actually met one another? I think of first. Yeah. Um. So actually, like geographically i was in the same spot that we are right now um living That's in the same true. town <laughs> i forgot about that okay um yeah so i was living here in a town called redding california and um i was out here doing an internship at a church and had um not like i was like about a year year and a half removed from like a long term relationship um that had I wouldn't say ended badly. It just was time for it to be over. And so um, that was part of the reason I had moved out here. And then, yeah, like relationally, um, I had like gone on a blind date um, that didn't really go well. (laughs) And yeah, so I was kind of like figuring out um, I had been in this relationship like all through high school and college, that previous relationship. So I but been single as an as an adult Mm -hmm. um so I was kind of like fumbling my way through that um and you know not doing the best job (laughs) but um yeah so that's kind of where I was at okay and how old by the way how old were you sorry Krista how old were you Josh around this time 25 24 25 okay what about you Krista um, I had just moved to New York from Oklahoma and I grown up in Oklahoma, graduated nursing school, lived there for a year. And I just felt like I was kind of at a dead end, like career wise, like guy wise. I hadn't really dated anyone long term. Um, and I always thought I it was because I had like commitment issues. Um, but I think I really just hadn't found the right person and God was really like protecting me from things that weren't good for me. Um, but when I left Oklahoma, I was really like, I felt like a turning, like kind of a fork in the road of like, Mm -hmm. I could choose to remain in Oklahoma and it wouldn't have been a good path. There was a guy there that was kind of manipulative and I could have seen myself. I really saw myself, um, getting involved in that and it wouldn't have been healthy. Um, so I chose to move to New York to go to seminary, um, a year earlier than I had planned. And, um, I moved there in September of 2012. So I was 23 and, um, yeah, right before I met Josh, there was this, I think I really didn't believe that I was worth, um, enough that I wasn't worth marrying a guy that I wanted to be married to, like somebody that godly, um, and, respected me and saw me as beautiful and I remember one time I was in counseling and because it was free at my school (laughs) and so I was in a session and I just made some like bad choices with guys and um, my counselor I was like I just don't think I'm like worth worthy of the guys that I want to be with Mm. and like well what do you think that they want in a woman And I said, oh, I don't know, somebody who loves Jesus and who loves people and is really fun. And I stopped myself because I said, oh, that's me. (laughs) I'm like listening to you. I'm like, right. So (laughs) you describe Krista. (laughs) But it was the first time I think that I realized like, oh, I'm actually a high caliber person. And I I deserve to be with somebody who respects me and who loves Jesus and who values the same things that I value. And that's worth waiting for. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd kind of just been through all of that. And then, um, yeah, like right before we met. Mm-hmm. Mm. That, that just right there, before we even start your story is a word, because I think a lot of people, a lot of people wrestle with that of, am I worthy of the type of person I really long for? Mm-hmm. And is that, and, and does that person exist? Um, yeah. So yeah, that's very real. Um, but I love that you talk that out loud. I almost think that's a, I think that's a great exercise actually. Now that I'm saying, now that you said that to like talk out loud, what do you think they're looking for? Um, Mm -hmm. uh, That's amazing. So, so let's go to now you, Krista are in New York. Um, and to be clear, you are just North of New York city because I will say I had the, I have nothing to do with your story, but I was a bystander during that season. Yes. So <laughs> um, I had the privilege of being involved in your all's lives while your story was unfolding. Mm-hmm. So Josh, you're in Northern California, Carissa, you're in New York. So how the hell, how, how the heck did y'all meet? <laughs> So I grew up in New Jersey. So I was, you know, I was living out here in California, but um, I was coming back and visiting my family and some friends back in um, New Jersey and New York area because I went to college. Um, I did my undergraduate and my my seminary degree from the same same school that Carissa went to for her seminary degree. So, mm-hmm. um. So I came back for a visit and I was going to what was my church when I lived there, um, just connecting with some friends. And I, Carissa happened to be there the same, the same Sunday that I was visiting. And um, <laughs> this could be a lot longer at this part of the story, but I, the, the short of it is I saw her and I was like, wow, I like, that's just a really like beautiful, attractive woman. Like I didn't know her. Um, and, but saw her while we were, while I was there in church. And then, you know, she was, I think it was what your second time Mm -hmm. ever at this church, but just visiting. And so afterwards I'm like going to all my friends and I'm like, Hey, who, cause she left. And then I'm like, (laughs) where'd she go? And so I'm like, where, where, who do you know who that is? And there, everyone's like, no, no, we don't know. And finally, <laughs> finally came across a guy, um, a mutual friend mm-hmm. who was also going to seminary and who knew it was like, oh, yeah, this, this girl, Carissa. And um, <laughs> so that was that like initial, like me just like seeing her, although Carissa has her own like part of the story, I would say from like that day <laughs> seeing me. <laughs> yeah, well, it was only my second week because I had been there before and nobody had talked to me. So I didn't want to go back. But then my friend was visiting from Las Vegas and so I felt a little braver. So it's like, let's go to this church. And I remember standing there feeling so self-conscious because I was having a bad hair day. I didn't like my outfit. It was raining and I was wearing the wrong shoes. <laughs> and But I remember like looking over <laughs> because the pastor was like, oh, here's Josh North from California. And <laughs> I remember looking over and he was dressed so unusually. <laughs> Um, for New York <laughs> and for what I'd ever experienced before and I will never forget what he was wearing he was wearing like skinny jeans and a white button down like long sleeve shirt and then he had this plaid flannel scarf like tied like very severely around his neck <laughs> like, it, was, it was so tight and I get very claustrophobic with scarves so I think that's probably why I remember it that was tied so tight around his neck oh and had God. his legs crossed in a way that I'd never seen a guy cross his legs because his <laughs> he's just very long and and slender and so his legs were I can't cross my legs like that so and um I, I don't remember saying this but my friend Katie told me that I mentioned that he was cute oh. when he left but I was working in Long Island two hours away so I had to leave pretty much right after church. So I had no idea that he was looking for me. (laughs) Yeah. First of all, yes, Josh, you are the quintessential hipster. Um, At least of that time. 
I was that, living in I was living in Brooklyn at the time, and you like fit into certain parts of Brooklyn, like you know, extremely well. Um, <laughs> but uh, that what I love about that I don't know if I've heard that I've probably heard it at some point, but what I love about that is, Krista. Meanwhile, you were you were in this season of like. You know, am I beautiful enough? Am I enough? And here Josh is like, who is that woman? Um, <laughs> I got to find out who this woman is. Uh, that's, you know, God is so good just to like mm -hmm. show you. Yeah. You know, girl, I got you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, he definitely did. And something that I had prayed before that, um, really after I'd had that really frustrating season was, God, I just pray that whoever he is, that he'll notice me first and that he'll pursue me when I'm there because I'm the, I'm a daydreamer. I'm the kind of person who was married to like a hundred people in my mind before I met. And I just knew like, this is how I'm going to know he's the one because I'm going to be obsessive. Mm. And so when we met later in the week and actually talked. And then eventually he sent me a Facebook message like, Hey, I want to get Classy. to know you. Um, I was like, he's the one, like, I just know it because it was not even in the front of my mind or the back of my mind at mm -hmm. all. I had no idea. So I felt like the Lord was just so good in how he met me. It was kind of a funny season to be meeting somebody um, after I just, you know, had a string of people that were like right. wrong, you know? Um, but yeah, it was just so good of the Lord to wow. give me what I wanted and what I prayed for. Right. So yeah. You, oh, go ahead, Josh. No, I was just going to say for me, like that, like me going around saying who, like who, who, who is she? Like, that's not really like, that wasn't my personality, like my default. So it's kind of funny, like even before I met her, like I'd say Chris was always like really like, challenged me in a good way and like pulled me out of like I don't know my shell in a sense for sure and she was already doing that and we hadn't even met because I was like I've got to know like who this is and that's not like my MO at all <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's so good that's so good um so you all you see one another at church mm -hmm. and how did you end up meeting later on in the week uh, so I was, it was back at church again. I was helping, um, I was playing, I played the piano and I was playing for a worship night at, um, at church later that week. Cause my friend was the worship pastor at, um, at the church. And so I was there and Carissa came that night. And, um, yeah, just like afterwards, a after the evening was over, there wasn't like a large group of people there. And so everyone was kind of just like <laughs> congregating and talking <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I didn't really say much. I just said, hello. He said, hi, I'm Josh. Like <laughs> shoved his hand towards me, like to shake my hand. It was the most awkward thing ever. Well. Yeah. Because I had no idea that he'd been searching for me for a week. Oh, so, that's so cute, though. So we met, and I wasn't even gonna go because I was texting this guy from back home that was like so bad for me, and I got there really late, and I was like, "Man, I don't even think I should go in." And like this guy who's not even a Christian I was like, "Why not? Why shouldn't you go in?" And so I was like, "Okay, I guess I'll go in for the last ten minutes of the worship night." And so I did, and that's when we met. And um, then that Sunday, we we connected again. Yeah, in church. Yeah, because we were going to go. I was going to go with my friend George, who was our only mutual friend. I was going to go to a prayer meeting with him on, on Monday night in Jersey. And he was like, oh, Josh really wants to go too. Can you? And I was going to drive. <laughs> so he said, hey, why don't you go talk to Josh and and just that, like figure out how you're going to pick him up? It's like, okay. Like, I don't know this guy. <laughs> So we figured out how to arrange that. And then I ended up having a car accident, just like a fender bender in Jersey on Monday. And so I called Jordan and said, I can't drive. I don't feel, I don't want to drive back to Jersey. So he ended up driving. It was raining and cold. It was in January in New York. And he pulls up to my dorm 
and there's already somebody sitting in the front seat with George that I didn't know. And then this guy in the back and I had a rough day. I was like, I don't really want to talk to anybody right now that I don't know. So I got in the back seat. But being my cheerful, friendly self, I did talk to him. And he had a very different perspective on our conversation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was ecstatic because I w- had really been like wanting to get some like quality time with him. <laughs> To get Finally, to know her. the back seat of the car. <laughs> I mean, it's perfect, right? There's nowhere for her to go. Right. Um, <laughs> so she like got in and we drove, and it was like probably like an hour, I think, from where yeah, from the college. And um, so we were driving there, and yeah, I mean, now I know she was being her like cheerful self, but I like from my end, I'm like, yeah, she's totally into me right now. She's talking <laughs> to me, like <laughs> she's engaging in this like conversation with me and I felt great because I'm like again it's kind of like outside of my personality like to be like that kind of like not that I'm not friendly but just I'm more introverted I'm more like keep to myself but I'm like I really want to talk to this girl and so I'm like oh yeah she must maybe she likes me maybe she like thinks I'm you know interesting (laughs) (laughs) I remember thinking he was interesting but we did talk the whole time and then we went to Dunkin Donuts after like all four of us and we're there until 2 Mm a.m and I remember very specifically what he ordered so even though I didn't like consciously I wasn't thinking oh I'm attracted to him or oh like I could see it go somewhere I was like filing these little details away um insight yeah or good awareness yeah. yeah yeah and he had this um what is it called like a bow tie yeah, the bow tie the donut. The bow tie donut. It's like a glazed donut. And he ha- got his coffee and he took the lid off and set it to the side. And I'd never seen anybody do that. I mean, everybody gets a lid for a reason, but he didn't drink it through the lid. And then, <laughs> so then the night, the night goes by and, you know, it's 2 a.m. And George dropped me off at my dorm and Josh was staying on campus, like not too far away. And so he said, oh, I'll just get out here. And it was a pretty far walk like, to his dorm. But or where he was saying, but I like to walk in the cold, so I didn't really think it was weird. And so I jumped out and I like ran to my door. And before I, before he left, before I went inside, I just said, "Bye, have a nice life in California." What <laughs> 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 inside? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what I was really like expecting in that moment, but I was like, "Ooh, this is like perfect. Maybe it'll be like I don't know what it'll be, but yeah." <laughs> She dashed away, and <laughs> I was left for, with a cold walk. <laughs> I was like, so you walked home from her place? <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> yeah, and then I got a Facebook message from him two yeah. years later. Yeah, so, like, afterwards, I was, like, I went back, and I was staying with one of my best friends, and just, like, I was talking with him about it, and just trying to figure out, like, what I, if I was going to do anything at all, because I was flying back here and but for whatever reason like I you know I just really I really felt like already interested and just like I wanted to at least continue this conversation um so um but I again like at this point now I you know she's like see and ever and I had no way to get in touch with her so (laughs) you know I did what any self-respecting person would do and looked her up on Facebook (laughs) I mean that's that's pretty uh, that's a pretty common move these days yeah (laughs) Yeah. it did what I had to do (laughs) now it's interesting Josh because you clearly from the beginning had a very strong attraction like right away like just noticed her and then in talking with her you were just very drawn were you did you take note of that at all like did you think this was maybe something that that God was up to something or was it just purely at this point? Like I just, this girl is attractive and I just want to continue. This. No, I think like, I think I sensed like maybe there was something more there. I think it was hard for me. Um, I was still had like some, I would say like some baggage at that point of like previous, that, that previous like long-term relationship that I had. And so um, that, you know, I wasn't, I didn't realize that all was still there, Yeah. (laughs) but, but there was definitely for me, like, I was like, yeah, like, 
this is something it's more than just like I'm attracted to you it feels like there's something like Mm -hmm. that could be more serious I I would say yeah okay so and Krista you said before you weren't consciously or subconsciously or maybe a little subconsciously at least filing some things away but you weren't consciously um attracted per se or taking Mm -hmm. note no so you send a Facebook message and what happens from there? Well, he was very straightforward, which I really appreciate because a lot of guys were not that way. And um, he just said, I really enjoyed talking to you. And I know I'm going to be in California and you're in New York, but I would really like to talk to you more. And like, this is something that I like to pursue if you're interested in that. And it wasn't like explicitly like, I, I want you, you know, but just the, I could tell even without knowing him that it was very intentional. Yeah. And, you know, I'd been praying for that and for something that I wasn't really expecting. Mm. And so the moment I read his message, I knew that I was going to marry him. Break that down, Carissa. (laughs) These are one of my favorite things to hear about. Um, (laughs) What do you mean you like you knew was this like a just a deep knowing? Did you feel like God spoke to you in that moment? Describe because a lot of people ask that question. Um, Mm -hmm. What does it mean to know? Um, So what did that mean to you per se or look like? Well, I think that in every other situation, there was a guy in high school and college that um, I definitely could have married. And I felt so incredibly uncomfortable the whole time. And I wrestled with it and I felt like it just wasn't right, but it it didn't make sense that it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I'd really wrestled with that. And there had been enough, I'd had enough experience and met enough people by this point in time that um, the Lord would just point like say to me, he's not the one I have for you. Mm -hmm. So like if I'd met a guy and I'd be daydreaming and the Lord would, say he's not the one I have for you Mm. and so I would move on and I think because I prayed such a specific prayer in a way that like had never happened like that situation Mm. had never happened to me before where a guy had just been so intentional and so kind and um very clearly pursuing me yeah I just knew okay well this is what I asked for Mm. he's doing it this is him Mm. and my dad actually told me later, he told me when I'd been at home at Christmas, like a few weeks before that God had given him the name of my husband, Mm -hmm. but he wouldn't tell me what the name was. And he told me when we were engaged that the name was Joshua. (laughs) So as soon as I told him, he was like, okay, go for it. (laughs) Oh, your dad. I could see (laughs) No, I love those details because it just speaks to, I don't know, the heart of God that he, he puts these desires in us. And Mm -hmm. I really believe I've said this before, um, on this podcast, but that he puts desires in us because he has every intention of answering them. And he wants Mm -hmm. to demonstrate, like, I hear you, I know you, and I want to bless you. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I was just listening to a sermon today. Um, shout out to um, Bishop Jakes, T.D. Jakes. But he was talking about um, how with favor um, that he was talking about the favor of God and how we can thank God for the many closed doors because yeah. they help highlight the open door. Yeah. And I just hearing you talk about these multiple guys where God was like, not that one, shut that door, not that one, shut the door. That really created in you a deep, a specific desire that you wanted to see fulfilled that God preserved Mm -hmm. not many men, but one man. Um, So I just, I love that, that, that really demonstrates just sort of the redemptive, the redemptive aspect of those closed doors that highlight God's open door. Yeah, definitely. Wow. So you all start chatting over Facebook or 
when does a phone call happen? Because this is now long distance. You all are moving into long distance now. Yeah. <laughs> it's just gotten yeah. back to California. So he wrote me actually in California, I think. I think so, yeah. Or no, I think it was right before I came back. Yeah. Um, and I was working like a travel nursing job two and a half hours from where I lived. Um, so I was up at night. So it helped because we were long distance. But he had given me his number. And I was like, there's no way that I am calling you first. So I said, here's my number if you want to call me. And I think it took us a little while to get a date. Mm -hmm. So we maybe texted a little bit, but not really very much before we talked. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure the first time I talked to him, I was at your house, at your apartment. Yeah, you were. I can't remember was, I can't remember why. I mean, what the, it might've just been hanging out, but uh, I remember you came Mm -hmm. and spent the night and I just remember you just didn't really go to bed right (laughs) so I think because Brooklyn was kind of on my way home from when I was working in Long Island so I stopped because I had I think worked during the week and then stopped the weekend with you and yeah because of the time difference it ended up I don't know, it was probably like 11 or something before we even started the call. Yeah. And then we talked for four hours. Yeah. Yeah. Four hours on the phone, which I didn't know was like hard for him. <laughs> I could talk on the phone. I could talk forever. So it wasn't really a big deal for me. But I think I crawled in bed with you at like 2 a.m. Right. It was late. <laughs> and I remember you rolling over and being like, hmm. <laughs> You're going to have to tell me about that tomorrow. <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> but yeah, I think we had talked maybe three times. And then I'd actually, there was a class that I was taking in seminary that I had signed up for that was going to a conference in Reading where Josh lived. And I had signed up for it and dropped it before I met him. Mm. Because with my job, I went to part time because of just the commuting and um, it was just really hard. So then I thought, well, that's crazy that I signed up for this class and they're going to Reading and he lives there. And I had immediately started thinking like, no, Carissa, like you can't do crazy stuff for a guy. Like you've done this before. This is not going to end well. Like you're kind of crazy. And I, I was talking to, um, she was kind of the interim dean of my missions program that I was in seminary and she just was very excited for me and she's like you never know Carissa like you should go Mm -hmm. and I was sitting in church and I was thinking god I just I don't know what to do and I heard him so clearly say did you ask me to drop if you should drop the class or did you just do it Mm -hmm. and I thought oh shoot (laughs) okay like (laughs) I didn't think that deeply about it, but I probably should have asked before, before I dropped the class. So I think I went home and booked my tickets. Um, I talked to him and and said, like, hey, I'm thinking about coming. Like, what do you think about that? Because he was working at the church, so he had a lot. To, he had to do a lot, like, at the conference. Um, and I wasn't sure. It was a pretty bold move. We'd only talked on yeah. the phone maybe three times and met in person, like, really just once. Yeah. Um, so I booked my ticket and we kind of knew, I think that we wanted to be together. Um, but we just wanted to actually talk in person after been chatting for a while. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, we met in January, Mm -hmm. I think like January 13th. Yeah. And then it was like maybe the middle of February. Yeah. Like the end of middle to end of February. Beginning of February. That you came out here was the end towards the end. Okay. Towards the end um that came out so we'd only known each other maybe a month yeah yeah yep and I came and picked her up from the airport and yeah I mean spent as every possible moment that I could with her right <laughs> right and he called my dad and asked permission to date me which of course my dad said yes because he had heard the name Joshua right so, yeah yeah at and that point the- Josh were you Um, I don't know, were you, like, Krista, after you sent that Facebook message, knew she was going to marry you, but did you have this sense yet, or did you take a little bit longer? Not Uh, long, but. (laughs) (laughs) I think, like, I think probably by the time she came out to visit, I was, like, 
yeah, I think this, this is like probably it. I mean, you know, like it's not it's not one of those things that I think we really said out loud straight away. But I think like at that by that point, I was like thinking that um, more along those lines, I would say. Yeah, I think we were both at the point where we knew we weren't playing around. Right. And we had talked about that, about how we're not just dating to date. We're not just going to chat it up for no right. reason. Like we want to be married. Yeah. So like we're like each of us was talking to the other one with the intention of, yeah, I want to get to know you because I like right. to marry. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. So you spend this conference or this time of this conference together in person, you make it official. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you fly back and what happens? Yeah, so I flew back and really I was the only one with money at that point because he was interning for a church and living in a shed. And (laughs) Hey, it was a nice shed. (laughs) It's really, I think, looking back and like, I could have thought, oh, he's kind of a deadbeat, you know? But I think I just, um, I don't know even why I didn't feel that way, but I could just tell he was choosing a simpler life. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like he was lazy, like he had intentionally made choices um, to live more simply. And I really respected that. And um, but I was working as a nurse. And so I had and I was a traveler. So I just had more funds than he did. And I could just drop things and and fly. But um, he came out for my birthday. Yeah, which would have been think. the next month. In yeah, which was the next month. Um <laughs> Because they gave you money, right, from the church for... I got, like, a bonus, a little intern bonus from the church, so yeah, it wasn't that to buy myself a plane ticket. <laughs> so, yeah, he came out and threw me a surprise birthday party with his friends, whom I didn't know. <laughs> but it was very Your sweet. friends. <laughs> <laughs> we became my friends and our dear friends of mine to this day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm very grateful for them. Um, but, nope. yeah, it was slightly awkward just because I didn't really know them at all, but... Um, it was still fun and really sweet. And he did things like got me new hubcaps because my hubcaps are missing and like wash my car, like things that I don't do and don't think about doing. Um, he did that like the day that he was visiting. Mm-hmm. And so it was really fun. It was short. We went on our first official date while I was, yeah. it wasn't, I went back to visit her for a birthday too. Yeah. And then the next month I went to visit him, which would have been April. And then I went back in May. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and yeah. that was kind of when he decided he was in this oh I could let you tell him but he was kind of in this am I going to move back mm-hmm. to New York and I had known that that he had was kind of torn um just because I think California had been so redemptive for you yeah um but yeah in May like he made the decision to actually move back because I told him I was not moving without a ring well fair enough yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I have come out like there was no real like time frame on my like internship or how long I was going to be here. And so when we started dating, it just made me start thinking like, okay, maybe I need to like reassess <laughs> why I'm still right. living in California. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um and but that but it was at that same time that um I, the opportunity presented itself for me potentially to um, actually like go on staff at the church that I had been interning at um, in, in a like limited capacity. But I mean, it really was a dream come true for me because I had always wanted to do like vocational, like mm-hmm. in the church ministry. And so um, it actually became like really difficult because uh, we, you know, like had this like new relationship, but also like, getting offered something that I had really wanted my whole life right Um, right and having to like figure that out and like process that and yeah she had come out in May and then left and then we were having these conversations trying to figure out like and I was just really I was struggling not in the sense that like I was just having a hard time like potentially giving up what I felt like was like the completion or like the fruition of a dream and so she came back out again like a week later after she had just been here and surprised me like she didn't tell me and had one of my friends go down to sacramento to pick her up at the airport and come up and i had guess she was coming Mm -hmm. um 
and I mean, she can speak a little more to that, but like, you know, just really felt like she needed to come here and we needed to talk about it in person. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I mean, you can tell your part of that, of that story. Well, I almost broke up with him because he was trying to choose between me and his dream. And it just felt like a lot of pressure. Like, what if you choose me and it doesn't work out? Like, you know, maybe I'll just take myself out of the equation because <laughs> I don't want that kind of pressure. Like we've only known each other for months, you know? Um, but by that point we'd said, I love you. We'd like talked about getting married and I just really enjoyed being together. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I took a day and prayed about it and like he knew I was thinking about breaking up with him. And so he was kind of distraught and I just felt like I need to take a risk. Like this is something that I need to risk. Mm. Um, so I went back to my dorm. I was somewhere journaling and I went to my dorm and I knocked on my friend Quinn's door and I said, Quinn, either tell me I'm crazy or drive me to the airport. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and she's like whoa 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 like please come in and talk to me about this and I so appreciate her because mm. she's a friend from seminary and she yeah. was she's very much like Josh like they are very much same yeah. personality and so she could help me understand things that I didn't really understand mm-hmm. about Josh and like give yeah. me perspective um so yeah I actually flew I think overnight and then um he was at the movies with his friend Mm -hmm. and he called me and I was like oh could you let me talk to your friend please and so I talked to him on the phone I was like hey could you pick me up from the airport tomorrow (laughs) yeah sure and he actually found a place for me to stay and everything so um and I think I felt like people kind of looked at us like we were crazy Mm -hmm. when I came back after being gone for only a week you know we'd only been dating for four months and really, I feel like everyone here was like, you guys are nuts. Like, why is she coming here <laughs> and talking about this? We only been dating a few months. But I think for us, we just knew that we had something special and yeah. Yeah. Um, it was important and we couldn't just blow it off. Yeah. Yeah. I think like the next step like was really like being able to be in a relationship living in the same place. Like we didn't feel like you know, we are crazy, but we're not that crazy. We weren't going to get married yet. Like, so, but we're like, we need to like, that felt like the natural next step for us. Um, which is why like, it was really, yeah, it made sense. Yeah. Sorry. Before you continue, I just, I don't know if I've heard that part where Josh, you felt like you were giving up a dream and I was going to bring this in if Krissa didn't, but I do want to mention, Krissa, that you, there was also a wrestle with you of, in a sense, am I getting ahead of myself with that? Or you also, there was a wrestle with you of feeling like, in a sense, you were potentially giving up something that you felt from childhood. Um, And I don't know if you want to, elaborate on that but i i find it interesting that both of you had this this wrestle of Mm. having to give up something um that felt very near and dear to you um and even potentially a call from god i mean i i I don't mean it in a disobedient way like but i do remember you wrestling with that tension carissa and i didn't know Mm -hmm. that josh also you wrestled with that tension yeah. So I don't know if you all could take a brief moment just to speak on that because I think that's a, a very normal wrestle that people go through of sort of giving up a dream or um some sort of vision you've you've had on your life and feeling like mm-hmm. this person that you love so dearly and you see that God has brought into your life. I'm not talking about people that just, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he cute, he fine, God, he gotta be mine. But the, <laughs> just sort of the, like, I know this is a gift from God, but it seems to be at odds with these other things that I've also felt were from God at the same time. Yeah. So yes, I have had a big wrestle with that because from the time I was 12, I had felt called to be a missionary nurse and I had spent every moment of my life since I was 12 
preparing for that life. So it had been over a decade of my life that I had committed to the pursuit of that. So I volunteered anywhere I could. I went to missions conferences. I did mission trips. I went to nursing school, even when I didn't like nursing school because I had a goal. And it was a little bit of pressure from my family once I had chosen that path. And so um, part of going to New York for me was kind of reassessing what really the call was Mm. and really separating my identity from like my vocation or my quote calling. Mm. Um, And, you know, in seminary, I learned a lot about like my calling is to Jesus. Right. And, you know, I ended up working in Long Island and ended up working in the Bronx in ERs. And it was just so like the Lord had already begun to kind of challenge me a little bit on like, what am I, why am I so focused on, I have to be a missionary. I have to go do this because if I was honest with myself, I, I wasn't really at the point that I met Josh, I was not super stoked about it. Mm. Um, I was being honest with myself, but I felt like I'd heard enough stories about people that had been disobedient or met the wrong married the wrong person because they just wanted to and they, you know, disobeyed God. And I was so afraid of disappointing God. And I was, I was terrified of being disobedient, Mm -hmm. um, which is why I was still going down that path, even when it didn't feel right. Um, So when I met Josh, right before we started dating, he said, so I know you really want to go to Africa. He's like, but do you think you could stay because I'm not going there? (laughs) And I met other guys that had been like, so I don't really want to do that, but do you still want to be my girlfriend? And I was like, no, thanks. You know? Right, right. So even that, the fact that I was considering being with him, even though mm. that was on his heart or on his life that he knew of, um, was a big deal to me. That meant a lot to me. It's like, okay, well, it was kind of like, okay, maybe I've been pursuing their the wrong thing in the wrong way. Um, But I think the thing that really helped me, because it was something that I had to grieve and let go of because I'd been pursuing for over a decade of my life. And so even though part of it was a relief, I was also questioning, what if I'm doing the wrong thing? What if I am disobedient? What if I'm just being selfish? And the thing I think that really um, led me to date him ultimately was that he had broken off a relationship with a girl that he'd been with for seven years and followed the Lord to California and was really doing some, had really made some painful choices in obedience to God. And so I, you know, I was like, this is a guy that hears God's voice Mm. and listens. And even when it's hard, Mm, that's good. That's important to me more important than where he thinks he's going right now because we were still young and right. who knew where God was going to take him or where he was going to take me or us together. And so ultimately that was more important to me than where he said he was going to live on the globe. That's a <laughs> mic drop there though. <laughs> because For real though, because you're highlighting, uh, you're, you're highlighting something that's important to to look for and whether it's a marriage relationship or just community people you're surrounding yourself yeah. with is are you surrounding yourself with people that are actively seeking the Lord and actively listening for his voice and wanting to yeah. honor and obey him because those are the people you want speaking into your life those are the that's the type of person you want to marry because mm-hmm. at the moment they may be like nah I don't want to I want to stay right where I am. I don't want to, I don't have a heart for missions, but that person submitted to God. So Mm -hmm. if God says, I want you to, to do um, missions, then that person's going to do it because they have a heart surrender to God. So you're highlighting something that's just so important to Mm -hmm. um, keep in mind, but um. Josh, do you want to add on to that from like your aspect or your wrestle that you, you had? 
Yeah, I think I was thinking about it um, while Chris was talking. And I think like for me being in that position, um, there was a lot like, I think looking back now, things that I've like worked through and processed through, I'm like, I, there was a lot that I was getting from like, just even the idea of like doing like church ministry. Like there was so much like of my identity that was like, I put into that. Mm-hmm. um that I think like even like looking back now I'm like I think God was trying to like unravel that a little bit even in this right. decision is um it felt like you know if I say no to this like that like that's it like I'm like losing everything like mm-hmm. you know or, you know it just felt so devastating to me at, to, to me at the time um but I think like looking back on it now like I just had to come to a place where I was like you know I think number one, like trusting God that, okay, if I say no to this, like, if this is like my calling, or if this is the thing you have for me, like you're going to bring about something else down the line. Yeah, right. And I think along, uh, like along those same lines, like number two is like, I was thinking about like, you know, thinking about Carissa, I'm like, this is, I'm considering like the rest of my life. Mm. Like, I'm considering like, this is the person who I'm thinking could be my wife, but that that's the rest of like my days on earth. And as opposed to this job, you know, which is, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, with, with church, I think it's hard because sometimes we do get like, it doesn't, you know, people want to talk about calling for like, and then yeah. but it, is, it was a job. And I'm like, yeah, I could say, I could say yes to this and potentially lose like, who's, who's going to be like my part, who could be my part, like someone who's going to be my partner in life. And I, and I would be, I don't know. I felt like I need to give this, I need to go back and, and find out. And right. yeah, I think it'd be those two things, just like trusting yeah. God and like realizing like this is bigger. And like, I, mm-hmm. you know, and what we've realized, I think just down the line, like in our marriage is like this, like us, like our family, like that's the mo- like ministry calling, like that's the thing, like that's it. And uh, like a job or what I do in my, like to make money, like that's like secondary to this. Right. And I mean, I I think that even in that moment, just like starting to realize some of those things. Well, cause I told you too, that I didn't want to be a pastor's wife. (laughs) (laughs) So he says, I don't want to go to Africa. And I said, well, I'm not being a pastor's wife. And if I am, I'm not going to come every day. And every Sunday, (laughs) I'm not going to like just sit there and serve you. (laughs) <laughs> like, like that's not me <laughs> like okay <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness that's so good though what you all drew out I'm not going to add to it I'm just going to let it sit and simmer with folks because um, both of you just drew out some really key things and it is a minister ministers to me because uh, we all find ourselves sometimes in what I would call almost like conflicting seasons where it feels Mm -hmm. there's these tensions of like, Oh, God's brought an opportunity into your life. But at the same time, didn't you like tell me to do that? I'm confused. What am I, God, what are you, you know, saying? Mm -hmm. And so that's really good. So Josh, you move back to New York Mm -hmm. and this is May now. July. By the time I came, July, yeah. Okay, July. And any any major highlights um, in that season before you get engaged, or was it kind of smooth sailing until you you know (laughs) pop that you pop that ring? Uh, I would say I don't don't think any aspect of our relationship was smooth sailing. (laughs) (laughs) We're both very stubborn people. Yeah, yeah. I you know it was a very exciting season for <laughs> sure um I think just adjusting to like being in the same yeah. place together and you know even though I had made that decision to come back like I finding a place to live and right, get right. a job and kind of like reestablishing my life there was took a lot longer than I anticipated um so I, yeah there were definitely some challenges in that and maybe you could want to I don't know if you want to add to yeah that, well but. he was my first actual boyfriend so I'd never really had a relationship so the only thing that I'd had was long distance so when he came back 
I was like, wow, I'm not sure if I like this. Like you're here all the time because he didn't have a job. Like he was staying with a friend on campus so he could come over all the time. I was like, this is just too much. I just don't know if I, if I can handle this. <laughs> so it was a bit of a rough transition, but once I think we got into a rhythm of, and you got a job and like yeah. a, a secure place to live and all of that. It was, it was just nice to yeah. be in the same place. We were serving at church together. We were both on worship team. Um, <laughs> So that was nice to just be in like the same community and um, be able to just date normally. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I would say the one thing for me during that season was like I said, I had some like baggage, I think like relationally that I hadn't worked through. I don't think until I got into another relationship did I realize there was some of that there. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, the biggest thing for me in that season was kind of like unlearning some like unhealthy things from my prior relationship right right and really the the biggest one of those was like I I don't know Krista did a really great job just like even though I know it was hard for her in that transition I realized like I was like when I when I was in like that um in a relationship like I there was I was trying to do too much Mm. (laughs) I was trying to be like very impressive and like I need to do like all of these things and you know fancy restaurants yeah and I I think like I was feeling like an immense amount of pressure and I would say Carissa did a really good job just helping me like relax and like I don't know like making me feel appreciated just for being me Mm. um and not like what I could do or where I could take her because I mean I I couldn't do actually a lot of that anyways because I didn't have any money (laughs) so (laughs) like I don't care if we eat pizza or if we eat like a can of soup I just want to be with you right (laughs) right right yeah yeah and you, you are you did marry someone though who in your heart of hearts Josh you just are a generous giver you know you love to I've I've loved watching you love upon Krista plan surprises for her and do things that are very intentionally Mm -hmm. um things that she loves and uh I just you do that in such a great way um so I know that that's in your heart to do um, and I imagine there was a huge part of you that wanted to do all those things, but then at the same time in that season, you couldn't do it as how you imagined it, maybe. Yeah. And I think like it was ultimately like where my motivation was coming yeah. from in doing those things. Yeah. yeah. I think like I previously would do those things like to like, I was trying to like maintain that relationship or like I felt yeah. like I prove like yeah prove my worth and things like that and I think like as I like as we went further in our relationship like it just it came from like a different place like a healthier place yeah Um, yeah yeah that's good so when did you actually propose Uh, I was about a year just about almost a full year a year and a day started dating yeah yeah so in January or February 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 February. okay yeah yeah yeah, um, and we were actually back out here again in California, so we went back the next year to, to do the conference. to this conference at the church that I had interned at. Um, yeah, uh, so this could also be a very long story. So, uh, do you want to hear the story? Yeah, do you want to hear? Yeah, the you story? gotta. <laughs> I just I remember tidbits, and it's it's funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember the parts I remember. <laughs> so I was planning this all along, and. Uh, you know, I knew I wanted to do it here because we had started dating here. It felt like a cool place to do it. And so I had, um, Chris's, uh, parents had given me a, like a, a ring, like a family heir, heirloom. And, um, at Christmas. at Christmas when we were visiting and she didn't know. And so I had, well, kind of knew, but didn't know for sure. <laughs> And so I had like, I had taken it and um, got it sized and cleaned up. And I, we were, it was like the day before we actually left, we left for California and I didn't have it back because I sent it to, I sent it to a jeweler. And so I was like super stressed going on to this trip because I was like, I don't even have the ring to do what I want to do. And so we, we go out, we come out here and I, I think it was the last day we were here, maybe second, second to last day that we were mm-hmm. here. 
um, we had some downtime and we had, um, I took her up to this um, waterfall. waterfall that we had been to. And so we go up there, but I mean, we're kind of like having an argument on the way there. <laughs> That's uh, the part I remember. <laughs> Well, I had been like really wrestling because I am the kind of person that if I know something is right, I am not going to wait a long time to make the decision to like move forward. So I said, okay, I want to marry you. Like, I know you have the ring because my mom came out of the room after she talked to you and she didn't have the ring on her finger and she'd been wearing it. And I knew it wasn't there. So I knew you had the ring. (laughs) What is taking you so long? So we're driving up there and I was trying to be honest with how I was feeling because I was feeling very tumultuous about all of it that why are we not engaged yet I really wanted to get married in May I felt like the Lord had told me that we were supposed to get married on May 31st it's the end of February so like what is your problem and so we're we're driving up to this waterfall it was like 45 minutes away Mm -hmm. and he said um, well, you know, it's the same as with our friends, like with Marco and Chantal and with Andrew and Jillian, like the woman just usually wants it more than the guy and Gosh. just wants it sooner. <laughs> okay. Okay. To be fair, those weren't my real honest thoughts. I was like, she was starting to you poke. Were trying. Yes, I get it. She was starting to poke at this. And I was like, I wanted it to be a surprise. Like I didn't want her to know. And she's honestly like, she's very hard to surprise. <laughs> and uh, oh I, I'm like, okay. So the, he made me mad instead. The only way for her not to know is for me to like purposely like instigate. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm fuming in the car. Like, are you kidding me? Like, how long is this going to take, man? Like, I I am ready. <laughs> like, if you're not ready now, then I'm going to find out, move on and find somebody else because I just don't have this kind of time. And... <laughs> So we get up there to the waterfall and I was like, there's, and you have to re- walk on the railroad tracks. It's actually illegal to go on the railroad tracks to this waterfall, but it's so beautiful. That everybody does it anyways. So we get up there and I was just increasingly like, I was so angry and my mind was just going crazy places. And so we're walking and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going to have to break up with him because if he's not going to propose to me, then I just, I'm not going to wait any longer. So, but then I'm just going to have to be alone forever because I just can't really imagine being with anybody else <laughs> so, like, <he's laughs> going on in my head. I'm like, I just don't think I can go to the waterfall with him. Yeah. And in the oh. meantime, I, that ring had arrived after we left. I had one of my friends overnight it to California. So I had it. And so we're walking and I'm just like, I, how can I can continue to like play this off? Because she's so mad at this point. <laughs> and finally, like, she's like, that's it. Like, I'm going back to the car. Like, and she literally turns around on the railroad tracks. She's like, I'm, I'm done with this conversation. I'm leaving. And I just was like, <laughs> shocked. Like, I just couldn't believe this was happening. I, and I'm like thinking to myself, I had this whole plan, like it was oh, so amazing. I wanted gosh. to do it in this spot, and, but I'm I'm in panicking because I don't know what to do. And so I really like I was standing there and I'm like, all right, Lord, like you're gonna have to do something to make her turn around because there's nothing that I could do at this point that's gonna get her to turn around on her own. And so I'm standing there watching her. She's nearly like out of sight, like around the corner. And the railroad tracks, like we were walking on, run along this like creek. It's kind of like it runs into the Sacramento River. And I see like as she's walking, this guy in like, you know, like a fisherman, like fisherman gear, like full garb. Yeah. Like the the boots and like waders and like has all the stuff. <laughs> it's quite and freaky. Comes out from from this creek and it was enough to scare Carissa. <laughs> and she she turned around and came back <laughs> begrudgingly. So I turned around and I went back to him. I was like, fine, I'll go with you, but this is the last thing I'm doing for you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, okay. <laughs> I was just glad she was back. <laughs> so we get to the waterfall and I was like slowly starting to come around, like oh my okay, gosh. Maybe I should not be so mad, you know. 
And so I went and found like the smallest rock to like sit on over by the, the waterfall, like the creek area that came from it. And I was sitting there and all of a sudden, like he comes around and I was going to apologize. And he like comes around and like starts talking to me and it's, and it's like giving a speech. And I was like, <laughs> what is happening right now? Yeah, well, I mean, I figured now, you know, now it's as good a time, time as ever. Got a giant bite, and I <laughs> need to do it. So we made it to the waterfall. Um. <laughs> and today I was surprised was an understatement. And he, like, was basically, like, crouching on the ground because I was so low on the rock that he couldn't really kneel. Yeah, but I'm like, I have to be lower than her. Like, I just had to be. So I was kind of laying on the ground. <laughs> remember exactly what he said because I was so completely shocked and of course I said yes but I think I felt so embarrassed because I had just been yelling at him about him not proposing and he was planning on it all along also he lied to me so I was kind of mad (laughs) but also I was just so embarrassed like it's it was a very humbling experience and I like God and I had a laugh about it because like, wow, Lord, like, I did not deserve this in this moment, especially like I was being like a spoiled child. Mm. And he still wants to be with me. And the fact that his thoughts weren't, wow, this girl's crazy. I'm not sure that I really want to marry her, which would have been warranted, you know, like I could have seen him thinking that I would have thought that was normal. Um, He was thinking, wow, I don't want to lose her. How can I propose? (laughs) Right. You're kind of nuts that that's what you're thinking. <laughs> also, what a gift, you know, yeah. that I yeah. felt so humbled and undeserving um, of him in that moment. <laughs> mm. I, you know, it reminds me, your story, your engagement story reminds me of our mutual friends, Dan and Amanda Sadlier, <laughs> uh, who are on uh, season one. Yes. But that, um, so if y'all have not heard their episode, go listen to it. But they have a, a similar story where Dan wanted to be very, uh, make it a surprise. And in the process made Amanda very upset. So, <laughs> <That story>. um, <laughs> but I appreciate your heart, Josh, and appreciate your desire to give her a good surprise and you did you did give her a good surprise you definitely wasn't expecting it that's for sure (laughs) i love it um y'all have a beautiful beautiful story and it reflects back onto an even more beautiful couple you guys are truly one of my favorites um you know i have a top 10 list no i'm kidding but you all are really one of my favorites and uh, I, one of the things that I have seen from you all from the beginning of your relationship is a mutual pursuit of one another. And um, obviously, Josh, you know, pursued Carissa in a in a way, but but um, in your marriage, you fight for one another, not with each other, though at times I'm sure, but you fight for mm-hmm. one another and really have sought to to honor and respect each other, to protect one another. Um, And that has been just a great joy as family to see how you all continue to um, choose one another. Like you said, Josh, that this is a forever decision. You know, this is a, a lifelong decision versus, you know, the jobs, the whatever, those can come and go. But this is what six, this is what stays. So, um, I want to just, as we head towards wrapping up, uh, season two is focusing on challenges in a redemptive light. So I want you all just to briefly, doesn't need to be long, but briefly touch on something, an aspect that has been challenging in your marriage, however you want to define that, um, or talk about that. Something that's been challenging in your marriage and how have you either overcome, how has God either helped you overcome it or at least work on it? Yeah, you want me to go first? 
Of course she does. Uh, I think, like, for me, um, something that that we've talked about a lot is just, like, what, um, like, the legacy that we want to create, like, as a family. Um, and I think, like, we talked about that we even before we had kids, but I think it becomes even more, like, um, relevant, like, in having kids and, like, what do we want to pass on, like, to our kids and, like, mm-hmm. our, you know, our family. Um, and so I think, like, something that's been challenging, like, for for me, at least, I mean, I get, probably for both of us, but, you know, I think, like, there's things that um, in, you know, like, there's things, no matter what family you're from, like, there's things that maybe you're, like, I don't know if I want to, like, this to be a part of, like, the legacy that I am creating, like, or that we're creating in our family, and it's just things that, like, you look at that are, like, I think natural as you're, as you're building something together, Mm -hmm. and so I think, like, for, for us, just, like, thinking through, like, what are the things that, like, what are the things we want to like take from our families that like our families of origin and like, what are the things that like we want to leave behind and like do something new or different. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's been like an ongoing process for, for us. Um, and I think like, obviously we're still in that, like our girls are just a few years old, sure. um, but I think, you know, it really kind of guides us in like the day to day then and like, our decisions that we make like from day to day and week to week, because we're like thinking like, this is what, this is what we're creating like together with God, with each other. This is what we're giving to our girls and like to our son, like, and how, how does that look like practically like now, you know, when I, you know, when, I don't know, when I've had a long day at work and I, you know, I feel frustrated and like, how am I going to respond in this moment? Like, what do I want to, you know? Right what is that how is that gonna shape like our family and our future um Mm -hmm. and just like realizing like those little decisions you know do impact like the big picture so I think for me that that's that would be a big thing that we've worked on like worked on and are working on and working towards good yeah good yeah I think um I don't know. I think it's just, it's hard to bring two people together and create one family, you know, um, like we, we're not from different countries, but we are from different regions. We have different backgrounds. And, um, I just think the thing that, you know, our, I don't know, the thing I think that has been the most, the most redemptive that I've seen, like the most redemption, um, out of something very challenging has been our communication. Um, I think like in the, you know, everyone says like, oh, communication, communication, communication in marriage, but it's really like effective communication is really the goal because you can communicate all day long and not actually say anything. Right. And um, I think in the beginning we would have like these knockdown drag out, like, arguments because we didn't really have an effective way of communicating. We had never seen it modeled for us um, in our families. I think like both of our families chose silence in a lot of situations Mm -hmm. um, or they're just, we weren't allowed to talk about certain things or just like the pattern of communication that we've both been taught was extremely unhealthy. And, you know, not any slack, any like, you know, anything towards our families. I think they, obviously did the best they could with what they were given, but it made it really difficult. You know, it took us very long time (laughs) to have anything productive, like between us. And, you know, like a few years in, it was, it was not easier, you know, it didn't get any easier just because we lived together longer. Right. And I've just seen the Lord, his faithfulness and his redemption in that, like, 2020, I think was probably our hardest year of marriage. And like, we just had this cyclical argument that we could just not resolve. And it was so frustrating. And I was feeling like, am I in the wrong place? Like, have I married the wrong person? Like, are we supposed to move on? Like, I just don't, I don't know how we're ever going to get through this. And um, I'm not even sure what happened, except that we had a breakthrough like the beginning of January of 2021 and we were finally able to reach like a conclusion together. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
it was just so healing. Like, um, you know, I had my brother passed away three months after that. And we had felt so disconnected because we weren't communicating well um, up until that point. And it was just looking back, it was just so gracious of the Lord um, that we were able to come to some kind of agreement and finally begin to start actually hearing and listening um, to one another. Um, And I think after that, like we just had, we've both been in counseling at different times and which has been so, so helpful and just learning like, how am I communicating ineffectively? Um, What can I do better? How can I better listen to my spouse, even just an individual counseling? And that's really enabled us to like have a lot more grace for one another um, and to be able to listen well and have productive communication. So I think, yeah, and not that we're perfect, but I just have seen so much growth in an area that I didn't have a lot of hope. Mm. Um, But that, you know, it's so important to both of us to really like hear the other's heart and be able to like make good decisions together and like to honor one another in our communication. So yeah, I think that's probably the most redemptive thing that I've seen in our marriage. (laughs) Good. That was good. Not communication, but effective communication and hearing the heart of your spouse. That's good. Um, And that's something I see while, like I said, I've, I've had the privilege of being kind of on the ends of your relationship Mm -hmm. for many years. And so Mm -hmm. I just, like I said, you all fight for each other. Um, That's really evident. So we're going to wrap up with this one final question, which is what's something your spouse does that makes your heart beat? <laughs> Not a children's podcast. Just want to you know, put that out there. You can say whatever you want. Hmm. No, you can go if you want. Um, I think for me, um, just the way that he champions me as a person and as a woman, um, especially in the church, that has been very surprising to me because I didn't grow up in that kind of way where I was very women, you know, weren't didn't really have a large role in the church or like in general, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think that that is one of the most like, yeah, he's just is so supportive and it's always so encouraging about like my voice and who I am as a woman and empowering me um, to even like empower our daughters. Mm-hmm. And it's something that is so special to me. And I know that it's not something that everybody has right um, in their spouse. So it's something that I maybe took for granted or like brushed him off in the beginning, like, Oh, whatever. Like, I'm not, I'm not worthy. I'm not worth this. Like, and he's like, yes, you are. And um, (laughs) to the point where now I believe it. And so I think like, that's one of the things still that is like the sweetest about him to me is just the way that he adores me and um, really empowers me and my voice and like even, you know, set eight months pregnant, like I don't feel like I'm pretty or like, you know, I'm attractive or like anything like that. And he's always like, I always catch him staring at me. Like even when I'm like Aww. really pregnant, I feel horrible. And he's like, I'm just so attracted to you. I just think you're so beautiful. And like, um, yeah, it always kind of makes me melt because I never really expected that. Um, I don't think I knew to like even want it. Mm. <laughs> that's so good well, it's All right, funny Josh. Because, well it's funny because i was gonna say besides the fact that she is absolutely gorgeous that's literally <laughs> gonna be my lead in and i you know i do that she still makes my she still gives me butterflies like you know all the cheesy things i could say but um <laughs> i think for me like the uh, the one thing i would say is that um and I mentioned it like earlier, even at the like before I had met her, she had the like she has this like ability. I mean, I would say maybe with 
beyond me, but I think just especially like feel special for the two of us is like, she's always kind of like been able to like get me out of my, get me out of my shell and kind of like, even more than that, I would say just like push me in a good way. Um, I think like my default is like comfortability. Mm. Uh, (laughs) Unfortunately, like it could be my default and she's always done such a great job at like pushing me beyond that and like challenging me um, where I need to be challenged. And again, like not, I use those words like push challenge, but they're really not bad. Like they feel right. Like they feel good because it's like always, it's pushing me towards something like good or pushing me towards something like that is part of who I am. And I think like just kind of reminding me of that along the way, like there's been, you know, so many aspects of like our marriage, but also like my, like just life journey personally that have been unexpected, like, you know, twists and turns, things happen. And it's easy, like for us to lose our way. I think a lot of times, you know, we have God obviously, but also like in the, like in the everyday, like it's your spouse that's like there to remind you. And Mm -hmm. so I think for me, like, I'm just so grateful for that because I would just get caught up in like, you know, Chris likes to say, oh, woe is me. And sometimes I do feel like that. Oh, woe is me. Something <laughs> happened. It happened. I don't know what I'm going to do. And she's just like, no, like, like, just remember this or remember that. Or like, this is who you are. And mm. she is just really like, so great at that. And I th- like, even recently, I just got back on, I, I play the piano. It's something that's really a passion of mine's music, which is, I mean, something that we're passionate about together. And I had like, put that aside even though we have a piano in our house I just wasn't playing it and I used to do it in church as we like I said earlier in my story in our story and um and just hadn't been doing it in a really long time and she's just like ever so slightly the past like one to two years like or three to four <laughs> just like Josh hey like maybe this is like something like why don't you get back to this and um I I am now back on our church's mm. worship team and um you know in large part I think to her just being persistent in that and like not being put off by like the fact that I can be slow sometimes honestly um <laughs> and I I can be I'll admit to that but she like she sticks with it and yeah. sticks with it, and I'm so like I'm so grateful for that beautifully put by both of you um I, I just appreciate you you guys sharing so honestly and openly with us. Uh, I learned some things. I thought I knew only oh, damn it, but um <laughs> you all taught you all definitely um taught me some things and honestly you guys dropped a lot of gems. Like I don't <laughs> without I don't even think trying. So um but that really does speak to you uh even though you guys aren't pastoring a church, you, there's still this ministry heart you guys have um, mm-hmm. within you. And it it is evidenced in how you, you know, just share your story, but also how you show up in people's lives, um, mm-hmm. how you parent and how you love each other. So I want to thank you, fam, for joining me today. And uh, I look forward to seeing seeing you all soon probably post to baby mm-hmm. yeah. yeah can't wait to meet him so well, thank you for having us it was a lot of fun yeah thanks yeah. so much awesome well love you all and we'll talk soon all right bye all right we're almost done wrapping up this episode but As you know, if you've been around at all this podcast, that I always wrap up sharing my heartbeat, which is what did I sense God speaking to me as I listened to Chris and Josh's story? And for me, it's these two words. He knows. In other words, God knows. God knows who you are. And the unique desires that you have. In fact, I'll go a step further. He shaped you that way. He formed those things in you. And that doesn't mean every single desire is from God. 
Absolutely not. But <laughs> there are things that he has put in deep inside of you from early on or as you've gone and experienced life and life's disappointments, perhaps, that those desires start to take shape. And I saw that so beautifully, uh, especially Krista talking about how Josh pursued her. And how he really, he just, he views her even eight months pregnant as this beautiful, beautiful woman. And she is. And it just reminded me of how much God knows our deep desires. He knows what we long for. And he really does. I believe he puts them there because he wants to give them. And he wants us to recognize when he gives them where they came from and to really give and point to him. I don't believe God gives desires just for us to be like, well, that's nice. Look at what I got. Nope. (laughs) He's like, I want to fulfill this longing for you. I want to, um, I want to overcome this insecurity you have. And I'm going to, I'm, you know, Krista, for example, just with her transparency and Josh, both of them had these, these insecurities or, or fears or various things that they voiced that the other person met, um, that helped not met in, a not fulfilled the insecurity, but help them overcome those things in the way that they showed up and loved the other person. And it just is a beautiful demonstration, y'all, that God puts desires in us. He knows us. He knows our frame. He knows how we're wired. He knows what we long for. He knows what we don't believe could ever happen. He knows what we think is impossible. He knows the things that we don't even think to pray for. That's something Krista said. If you were recall, she said, I don't even, I don't even think I thought to pray about that. And yet God satisfied it through Joshua, through Carissa. And he knows how to satisfy those things in you. Not so that we're like, yay for that thing, but ultimately for us to point to him and say, God, you are good. God, you are amazing. You all am at a place in my life where I don't got no more of this yet. Like just appreciating stuff or appreciating even people. I appreciate stuff. I appreciate people. But those things are ultimately gifts from God for me to say, thank you, Lord. May my life point people to you and may everything that you give, every desire you grant, everything that reminds me that you know me and that you love me and you know me inside and out. And so you know exactly how to unfold things. You know how exactly what doors to open, what doors to close. It is all to point to you to God. Our lives are to point people to God. They are to be demonstrations of him in our lives. And so anyone that tells you it is about the thing or about the stuff or about the person, it's not. It is to point to him. And so y'all, he knows you so intimately and so beautifully, intricately, and he loves you. He loves me. And so I want you to take, make a decision today, if you haven't already, (laughs) that you don't just enjoy what he gives you, but you point to the giver. May our lives more and more point to the giver of all good things. All right, you all, thank you for hanging out, listening to this amazing story and conversation and look forward to being with you all in a couple more weeks. 
for our next story. I knew. 